Welcome to the 2018 PropTech Challenge sponsored by Rebney, the Real Estate Board of New York. I'm Sandy Jackalow, Chief Information Officer from Meridian Capital, and I'm here with John Gilbert, the Chief Operating Officer of Rudin Management. You know, John, I was looking um, this morning on some transactions, and according to CoStar, there were 110,000 real estate professionals who created over $1.5 trillion worth of leases and transactions. I mean, that's just in a staggering volume when you think of it. That's, How do you, that's just one year. Yeah, that's just literally over the last year, which is, you know, uh, an industry unto itself, just the brokerage side of real estate without counting all the values that we have just in the assets itself. How do you see, at a very high general level, technology impacting the overall bro brokerage transaction process? Well, I like to say, Sandy, that if, you know, to all my real estate brothers and sisters, if you think you're in the real estate business, think again you're really in the technology business. And especially in terms of the brokerage world, because every deal, every lead, every no, every yes is a piece of data. And if you're not tracking that, and if you're not monitoring that, then you're ultimately not going into, you know, your next day on the job with as much information as you should have. So the, the ability to see these patterns, to use the data that you're collecting, rather than in your brain, but to put them into a centralized platform that can ultimately then organize that data and, and push it back out at you, then you're not really doing the best you possibly can be doing. Well, I, I think in one of the phrases that you used, lead generation, and I think lead generation is so important to literally every broker out there because that's where they're going to find the next deal. And it's, you know, seeing trends, it's comparing, it's understanding when the lease may turn over, the mortgage is expiring based on other environments. Um, how do you see some of the analytics coming into play so that you can actually focus on lead generation? Because at the end of the day, it's revenue production and it's you know doing your job better and more efficiently. Well, clearly from an owner's standpoint, what we care about in terms of, of deals and refinancings and um, ultimately is rate, is cost, right? And so knowing what the market is for rent level, uh, tenant improvement package, uh, the amount of free rent, to, to know what others are giving and right. taking in terms of, of a give and take economy is hugely valuable in real time. If I'm basing my assumptions of what a deal is for six months ago, I'm gonna miss the market. I need to know today what's going on in my markets. Well, and there, there are multiple sources of data. I mean, in New York City alone, there are databases like Acris and Reonomy, and there are multiple platforms where data has become enormously available and opened up, and Rebney has multiple databases and is a great source of information. You know, marrying that with the visualization, because if you think about it, real estate is such a visual industry, not only just from the architecture of building a beautiful building, but also as you walk down the street and you're on your mobile device, how do you see visualization playing into solutions to, to help make everyone more efficient? I think it's hugely, hugely important, if not essential, ultimately, to what we're hoping to accomplish here with the, with the PropTech Challenge, but ultimately within our business. If I can't see the data, if I can't visualize the data, then there's no way I'm going to be able to use it intelligently, efficiently, and quickly. So the visualization of data, I think, is, is one of the most important pieces that, that w we need to focus on. Well, you know, and I also think, given that we're mobile, and in some cases we're out of cell, you know, or Wi-Fi, um, being able to figure out what's available online versus offline so that, you know, when you're on the way to the next meeting, being able to see that on your device is going to be critical. Um, also, understanding what's going on around you where you're actually doing a transaction. So it's a combination of your own corporate data as well as all these other data points that are around there. And, and again, I think just tying it all together and having it in the moment is going to be you know, hugely important for everybody to be successful. Yeah, and take it one step further, as, as we take the existing data that we have, and let's use the residential uh, market for, sure. for, a, for a minute, knowing that, let's say the market six months ago was three and four bedroom units, and I'm a, a, a residential developer, and I'm about to design a condo facility, and yet some, somehow, suddenly I start to see that demand for those three and four bedroom units is dropping, and demand for one and two bedroom units is rising, 
that's going to hugely impact what I'm going to design and ultimately build to meet that market 18 months down the road when ultimately my product is ready to come online now that I'm just you know, putting shovels into the ground. Well, it's also even trying to understand what's the pipeline for things coming due because that could have an impact on free rent. It can have an impact on time to lease in between. So there are so many variables and it's understanding all those points and, you know, layering some intelligence onto them and some predictive analysis over time. You know, one of the other challenges that we see in the, in the brokerage side is, you know, CRM, customer relationship management, because, um, you know, people move around in the industry, contacts are hard, uh, you may not have the right information. Um, how do you think the developers out there on the software side should look at CRM in solving that problem? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I think the Salesforce.com example is a huge example in terms of the success that that company has had. You know, the leads that we have, I'm trying to rent you space, uh, you say no to me six months ago, uh, but now I, I go back and I, I'm able to grab the data that, that why you said no in the first place, and now suddenly I've got a piece of, a piece of space that will turn all of those no's into yes's. Well, if I was just remembering that, and you know, my brain's not so good, uh, <laughs> I'm going to forget that. But the fact that that data can be was stored and can now be brought back is going to help me make that deal and come at you with a product that I know meets your needs head on. You know, I'll tell you, it's interesting. It's almost at times where I think about social media with hashtags, where you have to have these simple little tags that are associated with a contact name or a company name so that if something comes up, you know that, oh, this person is looking for a lot of frontage. You know, something so that it connects the dots very easily, and then you can also, as this data comes through, apply the analytics. So it really, it's amazing how it all gets tied together. Um, you know, with that, you know, brokerage teams don't always collaborate very easily because there's concerns about security and proprietary information. Ego. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, how do you see using technology and innovation to get around, you know, to foster the spirit of collaboration, sharing data more openly, because ultimately it's for the good of the, the, the entire company to be able to, you know, connect that dot that you may know something that I don't know and bringing them together, we can end up, you know, co-brokering in a deal and both being more successful that way. Yeah, I think other industries have shown that once you remove the silo around the data and you allow that data to go horizontal, and to correlate and to create relationships with other data sets that never talk to each other, that's where the power comes in. That's where the value comes in. That's when we start to see, oh, wait, you've got that piece of data, I've got this piece of data, your two cents and my two cents doesn't equal four, it equals 10. So that really, I think, is where real estate has to get to in terms of understanding that it's, it's big data, but it's, it's the granularness of data. It's how do we really begin to slice and dice that data in ways that ultimately can answer questions that in that big, huge silo all by itself, the numbers, the, the answer doesn't jump out. But as I'm able to, to slice it, it does. And it, it jumps out at me and speaks to me in a way that in a, in a single silo, it would never, ever do that. You know, it's interesting. We've read, you know, a lot of articles lately about, you know, the potential of brokers being replaced by technology because the data becomes transparent and, you know, you or I as an individual can get access to that information when we're searching for an apartment or an office space. Um, how do you see that playing into this challenge? I see volume solving all of that. I, I see you know, the, the lack of friction within a, in a process solving that. Because if I'm looking for a home or a condo and I come to you as a broker knowing what I want and seeing that these are the five things that I want and don't show me anything else, that's good for you and it's good for me. Because at the end of the day, you're going to be more educated about what I truly want and I'm going to be less frustrated with you showing me stuff that I don't care about. So I, I think that, that getting rid of friction mm -hmm. is, and, and smoothing those transactions out uh, really is what, what everybody's looking for. You know, one of the challenges though is what data do you trust? Because you, know, you can go onto a lot of different systems and look at the same property, it's got totally different information. 
how do developers deal with the fact that we may have inconsistent data and, and normalize that so we can trust it? Well, that's where blockchain comes in, uh, in terms of having a system that is based on trust and truth and belief. You know, I, the, the, this, what I love about this technology, the aspect of technology in real estate, is understanding that, that there will be several systems of record. There will be a system of record for operating buildings. There will be a system of record for brokerage. There will be a system of record for financing. There will be a system of record for construction and design. And, and identifying what those systems of records become and evolve into is really where what this global you know, prop tech challenge is all about. Yeah, and it, it's truly, it is on a global scale and we're really all connected when you think about it, to, to particularly the data. Um, one last thought for the software developers that are out there. If you had to give them one piece of advice to help create a successful solution, what would that be? Uh, understand your customer. Try to understand as much about real estate as you can. Under, you know, reach out and talk to friends that you may have or friends of friends who are in the business and, and really try to dig down deep into their brain and to their psyche to understand what they do on a day-to-day -day basis so that you can come up with products and goods and services that will matter to them and will make their life better.